You know, the first time I ever heard the term thermonuclear, it came from Steve Jobs. And now it seems we finally get an example of, you know, what he meant back then, only with another company. As yes, Epic Games is fully gone from the App Store, and from some recent developments, it looks like things won't change. That OnePlus budget phone we were expecting might come way sooner than we thought. And if you thought the iPhone 12 was going to keep the price tag, it seems that won't be necessarily the case. I'm Jaime Rivera, and if there's anything I would really like right now is for anyone to figure out how to go thermonuclear on the coronavirus, especially for that second wave. This is Pocket Now Daily, sponsored by MediaTek. Stick around to learn why you should pick MediaTek for your next purchase. The official news today begin with deals and they actually start with very expensive phones and strategies that'll make them seem less expensive, but it's actually the fact that you're getting something else. Right now, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra is currently $170 off, leaving the 128 gigabyte variant for $1,380 shipped. I know it's the same price, but it's because you're pretty much getting a free pair of Galaxy Buds Plus. Then the Google Pixel 4 is $250 off, leaving the 64GB variant for $549 shipped. The 4XL is now $100 off, leaving the 64GB variant for $800. Finally, Amazon is having a sale on Razer peripherals. For example, the Viper Ultimate Hyperspeed, which Diego loves and took away from me is currently $20 off, leaving it at $130 shipped. Yes, Diego, you could probably buy that back from me. And then we've got Razer keyboards, mice, and more in the links in the description. Now, ever since Poco became an independent brand, the company has been very aggressive about their launches, and they've actually brought us some very compelling options. So far, we've got the Poco X2, the F2 Pro, which we actually recommended, but recently the company announced that we would be getting another phone soon. Well, their global spokesperson just went on Twitter and posted a picture of the X3 and a camera sample as well. Poco already confirmed that this phone will bring a 64 megapixel main sensor on a quad camera array, so this serves as more of a teaser. According to him, both of these pictures were taken by the X3 and they actually don't look bad at all. Some other leaked specifications for this phone include a 120Hz display with 240Hz touch sampling, 5160 milliamp hours on the battery, and it should be powered by an unannounced probably Snapdragon 732 SoC. And yes, everything points to a September 8th launch, so stay tuned as it seems that Poco is also going expensive. We hope not, but we'll see. And then a couple of days ago, we covered this LG Wing device, which was a concept. Uh, we saw it leaked on a video, and uh, yeah, we were kind of scared because it was sort of shown off while driving. Now that's not gonna be the case. Now it's actually the passenger, but we get to see more about what to expect from this phone. On this new 10 second clip, the person on the passenger seat is playing asphalt on the main display, which is set horizontally while getting driving directions on the vertical secondary display, which is at the top this time. Now what's interesting is that this time, it seems the phone was set into a different position when compared to last time, meaning that it'll feature multiple ways to play around with both displays instead of a single position. Now sadly, we don't have any more information over, you know, what to expect, price tag, launch time frame, anything. But yeah, LG, I'm, you've got my attention. Now let's talk about OnePlus. I mean, we have been hearing that the company is going to continue extending the Nord lineup into other possibilities that could be less expensive, and we've seen a lot of leaks about it. I mean, Monday we covered how the company's proprietary source code hinted that it would be working on a new budget phone with a possible Qualcomm Snapdragon 460. Now a new report from Android Central claims that OnePlus is working on an entry-level phone. This is powered by that probable Snapdragon 460, and the report mentions that the launch is imminent and that this device will be made available in global markets, including the United States. Apparently the code name for this this phone is Clover. It will feature a 6.52 inch 720p LCD display, then four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of expandable storage. I know, expandable, finally OnePlus. And it could also pack, listen to this, a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, 18 watt fast charging, and a triple camera array at the back, which would include a 13 megapixel main sensor and two two megapixel sensors. Like seriously, OnePlus, just stick to one camera. But it is also rumored to cost around $200. Now moving on, it looks like the company is also working on a smartwatch as well. Apparently there's this OnePlus watch that got certified in Singapore, revealing the model number. It's most likely running Wear OS on a Qualcomm Snapdragon Wear 4100, and it'll reportedly have the design similar to the Oppo watch. So you know what this means, it could be launched along with the OnePlus 8T. We'll keep you posted. 
Now, we've been covering every single thing that Apple will probably do to keep the same price for the iPhone 12. The idea that we're not getting many peripherals, probably just the cable, no charging adapter, no earbuds. And I mean, we saw with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra where we don't get earbuds anymore. But apparently, we're still gonna get a price hike. See, according to a new report from TrendForce Analytics, it looks like we're getting some more expensive devices after all, even with the accessory cut. According to them, these iPhones might be $50 to $100 more expensive than the 11 series. They claim that the 5.4 inch iPhone 12 could start at $699 or $749, the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Max from $799 to $849, the 6.1 inch 12 Pro could apparently start at $1049 instead of $999, and finally, the 6. 7 inch 12 Pro Max could be priced between $1149 and $1199. Most of the added costs are due to the new 5G components, as uh, we know that the Pro variants will rock millimeter wave 5G, which is causing some of the delays. Now, according to this particular report, something that does worry us is that it seems that storage is going to start at 64 gigs instead of 128. Like, seriously, Apple, 64 gigs again? How long did you have us at 16 gigs? I think it was up to the iPhone 6S Plus, like, Seriously, 64 gigs, that's insane. Not for that price. Folks, before we get to the hottest news, in addition to today's question, here's a word from today's sponsor, MediaTek. Did you know its technology powers the Amazon Echo Show 5? Its compact 5.5-inch display allows you to watch movies, TV shows, get daily briefs, run video calls, and listen to your favorite music. It features a MediaTek technology called far-field communication, which is the reason why you can whisper at the speaker from a distance and have it detect your commands. Follow the first link to find options on where to buy it on Amazon, and follow the second one to learn why brands like Amazon Trust Media Tech. Thank you for sponsoring this video. But yes, finally, the hottest news today have to do with Epic Games and Apple going thermonuclear at each other because clearly they were not joking around in each of their premises. Just for context, if you remember, Fortnite has been banned from the App Store since August 13th, when they violated the terms of service by adding an in-app payment option to their cosmetic store. Well, Apple gave them 14 days to fix this or they would be permanently banned from the store. Well, they just did it. Apple just terminated the Epic Games developer account, meaning that Fortnite isn't the only game affected anymore. If you search for other titles like Infinity Blade or Battle Breakers, they're completely gone. Epic announced the last Fortnite season yesterday, and technically you can still play, but you're only going to be able to play with other Apple users, and you won't be getting any new updates. Epic also sent emails to their users blaming Apple over the fact that they wouldn't be able to play the new season, and Apple simply responded by featuring PUBG on the App Store. Now, as of right now, only Epic's main account has been terminated, not the Epic Games International, which is responsible for the Unreal Engine, thanks to the judge's ruling, as Apple was actually going after both. Apple already confirmed this on a statement saying that it's so disappointing that the termination had to happen. Now, Epic doesn't have the ability to submit any more apps to the store. We don't even know if they're able to apply again. Let us know in the comments down below, what do you think? Do you think that justice was done? Do you think that this is overly dramatic? Honestly, I think it is. And I think it's overly dramatic from both parts. Like seriously, I mean, Apple's terms are there. I'm not saying they're good, but every company signs them if they want to be part of the store. Uh, if you remember how software distribution was before the App Store, I mean, developers would have to pay a huge cut to retail stores. It was like 60%. So this is the reason why the App Store became so popular. They cut that 60 to 30%. I'm still not saying that it's adequate. I'm saying, sure, companies like Epic should get a different treatment. I get it, they have scale. But at the same time, I mean, I think that just Epic was trying to test the waters and I, I don't know, I think they got owned. But this is just me. Let us know in the comments what you think because obviously I do feel that a termination and a ban is probably, again, too dramatic. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on PocketNow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me... God, I don't even know what to say anymore. To see me stay at home still. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.